Live. Okay. We are definitely live. Definitely live. All right. We just need to get the clients up. yesterday and I've never seen so many old people out in public so for our elderly citizens I want to encourage you just to keep your wits about you be careful because uh, it is not spring break I repeat it is not spring not, break it's not your time to reclaim the streets no. <laughs> <laughs> okay right, right. there was there was a meme that we did see the other day and they were like it's Britney bitch like, <laughs> all, it's just like all the old right? people are out <laughs> okay so over to the USA now Two young boys, Liam Elkine, a junior at Yale, and a friend, Simone, Simone, or Simon, Simone Policano, amassed 1,300 volunteers in 72 hours to deliver groceries and medicine to older New Yorkers and other vulnerable people. They call themselves Invisible Hands, and they aren't just providing groceries and medicine, but human contact and comfort at, at a safe distance, of course. They have assured the world that they are practicing social uh, distancing. Here's what I loved about this story though. There was an 83 year old neighbor who was like the first one and she has like, she loves, she's older, so she loves to be social. And so she's going mad inside her house. She said she's, she's cranking Zoom and doing online courses. Fantastic. You know, I also saw from Italy the other day, a young man who plays guitar out in his balcony playing Slayer, Angel of Death to his neighbors. <laughs> Um, so oh, is that real? It was real. Okay. That was real. Maybe we'll, we'll okay. find Okay, Slayer of Death. Wonderful. From old and frail to cute and cuddly, uh, Melbourne Zoo are now streaming animals live in a bid to help isolated people uh, feel more connected in contact. And we all know that in, in times of need, if there's a little bit of depression out there, animals are a good treatment for that. Um, you yes. can reach that over at, uh, I think it was www.zoo.org forward slash Melbourne on their page there. That's a good one for kids too. Like, I feel like you could do a fun game. Yeah. Like, put the Melbourne Zoo on and then like as a parent I would probably be doing a drinking game in the kitchen but I feel like put the TV on and then be like all right kids every time you see a penguin say penguin I don't know I don't is that a kid thing what I'm really getting from all this stuff people working from home and these live streamings and things is that this is really the introverts time to shine it's like <laughs> check in on the extroverts because <laughs> we're dying <laughs> I'm telling you okay all right so staying, staying in Australia now uh, we all know Warney uh, Australian cricket, great. What you may not know, and I didn't know, was I that um, uh, Warney is uh, has a brand of gin, and they've recently ceased production on gin, gin to begin production on hand sanitizer. 
this also backs up uh, other companies around the world. I think Bacardi in Puerto Rico are doing the same, uh, stopping the production of alcohol to make uh, more, more hand sanitizer. Um, we also have uh, 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 Elon Musk, who we all know and love, who's said he can make uh, the ventilators, which there's a huge shortage on. That's big. That's a really big one. So, like, people that are freaked out about, like, intensive care, the capacity for ventilators and so on, Elon Musk has committed on Twitter, and we all know if it's on social media, it's true, that he can shut down his operations of SpaceX and start to pump out ventilators. Medical grade ventilators. Here's what I want to, like, say, though. I feel like someone that loves to partake in a drink or two. Like, how do our gin drinkers feel right now? Like, Shane Warne has stopped production. What a hero. Not all heroes wear capes. As a gin drinker, I can say I'm somewhat pissed. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But no, I was like, he stopped gin producing to make hand sanitizer. And I was like, yeah, what is? But then I was like, oh, I don't know how the gin drinker... Anyway... If you're a gin drinker and you drink his gin, comment below and tell us how you're feeling. Gin flavoured hand sanitizer is the, uh, the comment from Lee Everett. Yeah, Lee, also he said, what is the champagne? Who knows what is in my Wonder Woman cup? So, I don't know where you are in the world, but right now it's uh, just gone 10.30am where we are. So. <laughs> no, I said to Lee, there will be champagne one day. Okay. There will be. Nighttime edition. Alright, so over now to just the um, commentary on how the world is healing, essentially. We all know that... Um, air pollution is down, there's more animals than ever across the world coming into the streets. Um, but basically, in all the cities where there is high self-isolation or high quarantine, the air has never been clearer. And in fact, in northern Italy, in a couple more days, they have said so, um, an expert on the ec economics of climate change at Georgia Tech University um, has said that Northern Italy are about to enjoy the cleanest air in their history, which is huge. I'm like, the world's healing. I'm a climate warrior. I feel like you, you too. Let's just say you too. Okay, we're going to uh, cross over to some sporting news now where over in USA, the Lakers and the Clippers, uh, along with the Kings uh, of, of the NBA franchises, have formed a joint plan and basically what they're doing is they're going to compensate hundreds of part-time contract workers um, that would typically staff uh, the games. Um, obviously doing that by all kind of chipping in and maybe taking some pay cuts here and there which I think is amazing because these are some of the people that are most affected um, yeah, by, sure. by the corona pandemic. Over in the, uh, the UK Premier League clubs Aston Villa and Brighton have also donated a, a thousand meals to the homeless and these are meals that would have been served at their games but obviously uh, with what's going on Yay! and um, games being suspended or not being played in front of crowds and things like that. Um, these mills have gone to the needy, which I think is fantastic as well. Fantastic. Um, not so much sport related, but on the same topic, Disney World um, have actually done the same thing. So a lot of their food that would have been used to feed the thousands of- I feel like that would be so much food. You know, they're, they're, I feel, like, the I feel homeless... like it would be so much sugar. That's true. Just, they do. There yeah. would be homeless people running around with fairy floss right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> joyful <laughs> and celebratory. <laughs> Um, yay for sport. I was like, I was like, yay sport. Morgs actually wanted to play an AFL like clip of like the first game in an empty MCG and yes. you could just hear like it's breathing. Just like, it's just like pitter patter. Because you can't <laughs> get the ball. <laughs> like you hear the handball, you hear the kick, you hear it all. It's hilarious. I, but I said no. No, Scotty, no. So um, this is a fun one for the UK. So we're going back over to the UK now. This is actually some phenomenal news, you guys. So remember that I always say like, obviously different pockets of countries and getting hit first and so on. And I feel like it's a lawless society. No, it's fine. But I feel like all world governments are kind of learning off the other. And right now in the UK, the government has actually just come out and said for employers that keep their employees hired during, if they're shut down, they have committed to pay 80% of their salary up to two and a half thousand pound a month, which is a lot for the UK, like that's a high salary. Um, I might move to the UK and get on the dole. Shall we? <laughs> <laughs> two and a half thousand pound a month, that's great. Shall we? Yeah. Um, yeah, but the borders are locked. Yeah. But that's phenomenal. So the fact that employees can stay uh, employed and watch Netflix, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, in a moment, in a while. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But yeah, and the government's going to come to the party and pay up to 80%, which is incredible. So there you go. And then ducking across to Ireland, where the Irish Postal Service has begun sending free postcards to people so they can keep in contact. 
So that's beautiful. Imagine how amazed they're going to be when they find out about the internet. <laughs> <laughs> Ireland, if you're listening, there is a thing called it. the internet. We do love you. But there I mean, is a thing called... What about old pe older people? Yeah, they got the phone. <laughs> they do, don't they? But I like... So Alexander Graham Bell invented this thing called a telephone. What a man. Crazy. What a mar remarkable man. Okay, on to Netflix. Yeah, so Netflix. This is amazing. Netflix. This is one hot off the press just this morning it's been announced. So uh, Netflix has come to the party with a $100 million relief fund to help uh, people who work in the creative space that are obviously maybe in entertainment and things like this. Um, like me, I'm a part-time hair model. I'm out of work. <laughs> no one's hiring hair models. Not even for hand sanitizer. Well, I have. Because the face doesn't work. <laughs> um, but people who've been left unemployed uh, without a way to earn any income due to the coronavirus, Netflix has said uh, the bulk of the funds will go to what's supporting uh, like laid off crew members and people who work in production. And do you know like what's that. we did? We like he's reading this basically for the first time this morning, but yeah. do you know what's funny? That it's hot off the press. <laughs> hot off the press. But do, I was just thinking, I was like, do you know what? What a beautiful, what's a word? I was going to say dichotomy, but it's not that. I always stuff it up. I didn't even think you but like, what it meant. I <laughs> no, dichotomy. What does it mean? We'll have to do it. Next I'll edition. Google we'll next edition. It. But the people that have like provided us with Netflix all these years who are about to get laid off and then paid still because Netflix is coming to the party and now going to be able to go home and Netflix and chill. Well, not really. Give that. it up for them. Here's what I was thinking as well. Um, for creative people, the, like this that get looked after financially. This worries me. No, 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 no. The, they're going to be able to go home so their musicians aren't performing at the moment. What they okay. are going to be at home doing um, is creating new art, new music. Yes. Um, Stand-up comedians who can't perform, creating new... Imagine the content that's yeah, going to come out. Yeah, it's going to come out yeah. once too. It's going to be yeah. great. Okay, so we'll end it right here, guys. Uh, back in Australia, this is some serious news now, where it seems that some new Aussie slang has been born coming from a meme, which is wonderful news, obviously for all Australians concerned, who love a good murdering of words. It would appear currently that hand sanitizer is now sunny. Self-isolation is in ISO. The Rona is, well, self-explanatory for our international friends, however, that is the coronavirus. And magpie, our nation's most hated bird, is considered a supermarket hoarder. So, honey, could you help us understand how that might actually be put in a sentence for our international friends? Yeah, so this is how, how it looks in the real world. Uh, me boss tested posy to the Rona. Uh, so now I'm in ISO. Uh, Pop down to Woolies for some Sani, but it's all been bloody magpied. Mm, and you've got to turn that, the, it's got to add at least 50% more Aussie accent. And probably an F-bomb. Probably an F-bomb. But we're keeping Probably a C-bomb and a W-bomb too. <laughs> <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> we keep it. We keep it professional though in this kitchen, sure. obviously. So, guys, uh, the way we're going to end this from now on, um, obviously, uh, I'm going to leave you with a shower thought. So, these are things that you might, you know, when you're just washing yourself in the shower, and you're like, oh, that's yeah, that's really interesting, right? He does this to me. All the time. Here's what happens. Okay, so Gordon Ramsay um, has a child's cooking show, right? And parents must have, knowing how he treats chefs must have hated their children when they were the first ones that they put in front of him. So show one, the first child that they put in front of him, they must have It would have been ours if we had one. But because they didn't know how he is with young chefs and young children. So think about it. Yeah, so like, it's like, wow, the how first you... person to put their child in front of Gordon Ramsay must have hated their, hated child. their child. It's learning logic. It's only logic. There you go. We're going to leave it there <laughs> and I will end with this every single day, but go and spread a little love today. I'm going to get up now and turn this off, but while I do, here's a quote for you in the background to read.